Get a real turntable. <laughs> a real turntable. Put the crinkle, crinkle the paper in it with a beat. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> a blue man group stuff. Barakash success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, Crown <clears throat> Cuts Academy, Bristol. We are coming to rocking episodes for you today. And my co host with the most, he is back after one week off. Am I Fields? Am I your barber? I take some time off. Got to get some things done every once in a while. I, wrote, I saw that there was a you that sent me the thing that said like um, 80, 80% of podcasts don't make it past the second episode. Was that you that sent me that? Um, Ryan, Ryan gave that to me. That Ryan, yeah, Ryan yeah. sent it to me. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, yeah. Jordan Barr from Western Tennessee. Sorry. Jay Baba on Instagram. Jay Baba. Uh, <laughs> Jordan just like jumped in. He's like, oh, are you taking my I didn't my mean shine? to. Yeah, that's, like, all, that's all good. It just jumped in my yeah. mind. Yeah. 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 He, he, you know, y'all always battle when it comes to time to introduce yeah. yourself. I don't know. No, it's, he can have the floor anytime. <laughs> nah, the whole floor. I don't want it. I'll be in the corner. I don't want it. He's the real star. That's what happened at the at this little that little event we did. They was like, we gotta get Jordan come out here. Dudes was coming in after hours. Like, yo, Jordan, get Jordan come out here. <laughs> Jordan is the real time celebrity. Man, no. they they was pull, they were calling their friends. They was pulling up <laughs> yeah. trying to get a cut. Yeah, one of my clients was like, Yeah, man, can I come too? I said, ah. He said, "Oh, free haircuts from Jordan. I'll be there." <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, but that's crazy when one of your clients. Want to come to a free event to get a haircut? Yeah, I don't think that's fair. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, I it don't is think fair. it is either. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's I mean, like, because you're doing something for the pre- people who are underprivileged, yeah, yeah. who are need it. You know what I mean? And you're regular. I yeah. mean, your form of giving back should be you got to donate or something. Yeah, you got to donate. Come there, get a haircut, and donate like fifty dollars. Something. Yeah, it's got to gotta be a donation. <laughs> it's thing. only fair. I think so. Don't try to use up some free stuff when you know you can get it. When Definitely. you know you you don't need it. And it was fun too to cut beside Jordan. I got the cup. It was dope. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. Brandon was there. Uh, shout out to Cass- Cassandra. Cassandra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cassandra was it? Your, your curl friend. That's yeah. her Instagram name. Your, your, your curl friend. Cassandra. <laughs> big, big. So that, that, that was a good thing y'all did last weekend. Yeah, yeah it was fun. It Just, had a good time. And, and then, you know, it's it's like some barbers, I mean, I know we all got to pay the bills and stuff, but, you know, to take a, take a day out and – help people it feels so good i mean and, right. and, and yeah sometimes you can't put a price on that and also <laughs> you think about how many people were there that ask you where you cut hair at because they would come visit you on the regular so next time you do something up there in your hometown i'll be there i keep saying i'm coming i got something coming yeah. up soon yeah uh, they want me to speak we need to get you speaking it's a health and wellness that's, thing. A, your, that's, that's your community so you gotta speak yeah but you're Craig Charles. I mean, <laughs> you know, I was walking down the street earlier, and I saw on the window, I saw vote for Craig, and I was like, no way. And I pulled up on it and said, Kate Craig for center. I was like, Craig finally running for office. No, that's my homie. I know her. Kate okay. Craig. I thought I thought she was running for office. I'm like, man, he made it real. I was like, gosh. <laughs> Did you see it, too? But yeah, no. Oh, I didn't see it. Uh, that would have been crazy. No, nah, that's my homie. She came by to school one time. Too. Vote for Craig for mayor of Johnson City. <laughs> but today, we're going to have a banging episode to talk about how to handle Things when things go away because as barbers we have we have families we have we work in the shop we teach um, at schools with instructors we're traveling educators and sometimes it can be overwhelming. What do you do? How do you handle that? Pray. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, that's that's a topic that I feel like I've been going through which is really relevant to me right now especially because i'm starting to feel like you're glowing up i mean yeah everybody has a story to tell as as things happen but it's just it feels like it's hard to i think it's just it's another learning curve that i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go through just like everything else you know you're gonna have to find out how to manage your time and when to say no Mm -hmm. and you know I mean, that's a some, big thing. Yeah, that's a that's a hard oh. thing for me. I like you know I like trying to help out everybody, but sometimes I kind of <clears throat> get to the point where I'm just like, all right, I need to take back like some time to myself. That's and, that's kind of what it took for me was like to get pushed to the point to where your back's against the wall and you had no choice but to say no. How, how to say no? Because as a barber, sometimes as you in your community, people will always come to you and want you to donate to the little league. 
Yeah. Want you to donate to this club. Want you to donate to that club. Want to be on this board. I want you to be on this board. Yeah. And even to the point where this lady Shit. told me what I was going to donate last week. And I told, and I had to text her back and said, um, I'm going to give you this much. You know what I mean? You're just going to tell You just saved me because I just remembered I had a board meeting tonight. <laughs> I forgot all about. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. You know what I'm saying? It can get overwhelmed because we have so much and people do see us as, I'm telling you, barbers are celebrities. Barbers are well-known in communities and people look up to barbers and see, because they see you stable and they see you making income every day. And most people don't get to see people making money on their jobs every day. You hear about them going to their jobs. But we service the people who go to jobs, and they see us working every day, and they see a form of stability. And you're usually working in a place. Most barbershops are very visible, and they're usually in a place where there's a lot of traffic. Right. So people are seeing you working, like visibly seeing you. Like you like you know people work. People know Mitch is doing podcasts, but people can't drive by and see Mitch mm-hmm. busting on a podcast. But we, people just drive by and see us cutting hair. And, you know, Jordan cutting – you know, I seen Jordan probably been cutting nine, ten o'clock. Yeah, o'clock no, most times I've had people they're like, "Bro, I seen you all the time here till like nine, eight thirty. And that's o'clock. a form of stability. Yeah. So and when people see a form of stability, they're just like, "Well, he got it." Well, that's a compliment to me it because is. because they're like, you know, to, hey man, you really working hard because people can visibly see you in there grinding, and like to me, that's a compliment. But, just, but people still don't respect that profession, even though they see that. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? You'd be surprised how many people like that'll actually. Bring you more clients just because they see you out later, later than everybody else. But so doing that, where we work seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day, a day, and we still have families, and we still have things to do. We, some of us might have kids, might have to go to a function, a recital, a game, a, a teacher parent meeting, or something for your own family. That can get overwhelming. Yeah, it is. And, and like I coach a little league team. And most of the time I try to work late, like when I can. I like I like to work late. I like to make money, so I don't mind working late. But I got little league games, you know, so I got to coach them. I got obligations mm-hmm. to go to those things. Like I had to just talk to a guy, and we're bouncing back. He always gets a late appointment, so we're trying to figure out where I can put him in. Right. But I ain't seen my daughter. I'm coaching my son's little league team, and I ain't seen my daughter play all year. Right. So my son don't have any games this this week, but my daughter does. So I can't I can't not go to her games. Right. I have to go to her games. So, so how do you choose which one to go to? Because you're coaching your son, you, got, you give him first preference? Well, I, yeah. Because, well, I told my daughter before the season started, because she's like, she'd been doing gymnastics. That was her thing. And mm-hmm. we consistently pay for her to do gymnastics. Well, she said she want to play softball this year. I'm like, listen, baby, I love you, but, you know, you know, co- daddy coaches your brother's team, and I might not make it to all your games, you know, because I've already committed to this. Exactly. I've already been committed to this. Okay. So, but <laughs> – you know, I, I got I got to at least make to the ones I can make it to. Right. So and that's why I got to book around that. But it, it's it's not so much overwhelming because it just becomes a lifestyle to the degree. I mean, you do it makes you prioritize things a lot better. And 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 the key to this, right? And I know we keep harping on this, but if you could start preparing and start organizing when you're in school, because yeah. this is Barber College Success Podcast. Mm-hmm. If you could start preparing to do these things, organize yourself, and understand that. You have to prioritize. You have to be able to say no. You have to be able to decipher and put yourself in position so you don't get burnt out. You need to you need to pick a time you can work, whatever right. times it is. Be consistent with those times. If you if you can work after orders, like Jordan, Jordan, I know Jordan's been doing it consistently since he started. If he works after hours, he charges after hours prices. Right. Period. Like that. That should be. I don't care if you're brand new cutting. If somebody wants you to cut after a certain time, then you need to charge them an after hour price and be time be, and a half. exactly and let people let people know that you're serious about your time initially because people will pull you like pull you as far as you let them stretch. It don't matter who it is. It could be your friends, your family. If you let them stretch you. And pull you, they're gonna keep pulling until you snap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they'll, they'll exhaust all of you. It, exactly. And they might not be doing it just because they're <laughs> trying. Not, not intentional. They're not trying to get over on you, but if they know that, hey, I can probably get my come to the crib and cut my hair at 10 o'clock at night for $30, who wouldn't do that? And it's not something that you could just flip the switch overnight and be good at it. No, it, no, takes, it, it takes time. Just start day one, allot your time. Look at your time and and how much it how how long it takes you to do a haircut, how much money you need, and that's your time. 
and be consistent with it. You, do you think Jordan is something that people should start thinking about before they even sign up to barber school? What for like um how to organize your time and how to how Yes, to for sure. Because I um I will say during barber school I was very lenient against like or what well, anytime somebody needed a haircut late or a house call. I wasn't I was charging I mean I was in barber school, I still I was charging like forty dollars for a house call. I mean forty that was me starting out. But once I got into the shop, I was still charging regular price even after like it was like 8 30, 9 o'clock just because you, you had the Orlando syndrome. <laughs> I was just, I was just like I was just like, man, I'm I'm gonna cut him. You know, I'm going it's gonna help me build my clientele just for for me to cut him. Just get that right. get them reps in, get them people in. And then later on, as I went down, you know, as I got them like out there like been company for a while, I had to make that decision of like, all right, I'm gonna start charging sixty five for the, the thing is right, one of the hardest things to do when you when you start respecting yourself and your prices and letting your clients know, hey, this is what I'm charging, because they don't understand it. And that's why I tell students at times, yeah, keep cutting at your house and, and building that clientele. But when everybody telling you nice right now, and a lot of times they're lying to you. <laughs> because they're, yeah, you doing all right. Yeah, yeah. They're lying to you because you're getting that cheap, cheap haircut. But that moment you, 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 you get out of school, you get your license, and you raise your price to where it needs to be, they're going to find something wrong with your cut. They're going to push back. They're going to mm-hmm. find something wrong with you. Yeah, I got I got a cousin, and it's been a consistent thing with him. I mean, he's starting to lighten up now, but, you know, when I when I raised my prices, he gave me a hard time, and I'm like, I'm sorry. That's what I got to do. And then I, I went to appointments. It's like, man, I ain't making no appointment. You need I, you need to call. I'm, I'm, I'm so-and-so. You need to make an appointment for me. He tried to bogart. He did, and, I, and then I raised my price again, and then he started going to other people out of spite. So I'm like, okay, you go to so and so out of spite. That, that's that ultimate pettiness. That is super petty. He is an expert pettiness. <laughs> expert. He's an expert at pettiness, and he's my, you know, he's my cousin. I love him, but he is an expert at pettiness. Petty but I let him go. I'm like, I ain't got to cut your hair. And that's the thing. You got to be able to say no. You got to be able to let go and understand mm-hmm. that every relationship is not meant to to last. No. Sometimes some are going to be dissolved. That doesn't mean you hate each other. They're just going to be dissolved. Yeah, that don't mean he, that he's you're his barber. No, I mean not you're his barber. You can be my friend without me cutting your hair. Yeah. And all those things can be avoided. It can't be avoided. But all those things, if you're able to organize and prioritize and prepare yourself, those are things that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the importance of going to school and, and being able to wake up every day and go, come to school on time and do your homework and do all those things on time, it's preparing you for when the, when the sh- business of the shop come in now. When you're your own business man and you're working in the shop, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to prepare. Spin bars. You, <laughs> you got to be prepared for those things because a lot of students think that they could just turn it on. Yeah. When they get out of school. No, it, take, it takes time. It repeti- it's just like. Uh, the repetition for the repeti- haircut. Yeah, just like repetition for the haircut. You have to do it every day consistently and then you're going to be part of your everyday schedule. So I mean, You got to make it routinely. Time is the one thing that we all have that we're consistently losing and we can never get more of. So you need to, that is your number one commodity. As, as, as a human being, that is the one priority you need to have in your life is trying to manage your time. I heard this thing by Eddie Murphy the other day. And, you know, I mean, hey, if it wasn't for these memes and our phones and how social media kind of helps us at times, because we get motivated by little things people say, and there's a whole bunch out there. So I seen Eddie Murphy, he said this thing. Uh, he said, um, don't quote me, but something similar to this. He says, um, the average person lived to about like 75 years old. Mm. 75. And he said, um, you get 75 birthdays, 75 Christmas, 75 Easter, 75 summers. Appreciate those times because it starts, the clock is ticking. Yeah. You're thinking you have time, but the more you don't appreciate those things and set yourself up for success. <clears throat> Or set yourself up to be in the good, you missing those times. Those times are, <laughs> are going downhill, even though it's climbing up in numbers, but it's going downhill. And you, and, and you got to pick your spots. Like there's times, you know what I'm saying? The heat, like I, I, went, I had a situation one time where uh, the heat pump went out in my, in my house, mm-hmm. right? You know, we're going to get a loan. But, you know, and then the two guys that worked in the shop with me were out the shop. So I'm in the shop by myself. So God was like, listen, I'm going to give you the money, but you're going to earn it. So... Yeah. I mean, I grounded out and got it. So, I mean, there's times where you got to miss a ball game. 
right. to pay the light bill. There's times where you gotta you gotta miss Christmas Eve because you're doing double price haircuts on Christmas Eve, and you want to make sure that you're good to take a couple of days off. There's times where you gotta grind it out, but the the you know you you only get so many days, and tomorrow's not promised. It, 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 you can get cut off today. You know, I can leave out here, out this podcast. God willing, it don't happen, and be done. Mm-hmm. And you want to hear my voice again? So you gotta you gotta prioritize your time and spend, especially with your family, the people that care about you. You got. I mean, making money. We have to make money. That we gotta is, live. You have to. You we gotta take care of our families. Money. We gotta take care of ourselves. But what's the point of making it if you ain't spending the time with the person that you're making it for? So you have to figure some way out. And the best way to again to figure it out is before you decide to jump into any journey you get ready to jump into as far as a career. Because your career is going to require some time for you to make that income, Mm -hmm. for you to take care of your family, for them to go to those games, go to the recitals. Because you're driving that car. You're the engine that's driving that car. And without that engine, the car (laughs) can't go nowhere. And, and, you know, there's also the investment of when you don't make money. Right. And you got to figure that in. I mean... Because it, it takes time, yes. You might not be making something right then, but long term, what what you could get out of it in the whole, it, it's so much more than just the monetary value of it. So, I mean, I, I, like you, you have to just be smart. Now, if, if you're going to go, if you're sitting at the house of the crib right now and playing Xbox and you ain't, your laundry's dirty, yeah, you got a day off. Oh, yeah, I deserve this day off. But your right. laundry, you ain't got no laundry done. You and you need to get your tires changed. You, your car need to be inspected. You need to you need to prioritize. And I'm not saying to a hundred hundred degree where you just micromanaging you ain't on about everything tedious. Yeah, it's gonna be some time where everybody has some form a little teeny 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 bit of procrastination. Yeah, because that's that's normal. Because nobody's a hundred percent. The person who's hundred percent, we all know who that is. Yeah, God, that's it. So, but you have to have some type of tact. You have to have some type of organization. To prepare yourself because you never know what can come at you that could really throw you off. Because mm-hmm. you sometimes you you forget you forget and procrastinate for so long that and then all of a sudden boom everything just comes in all at once. Oh, you're yeah. like oh snap! Right. I just had to spend like like fifteen hundred dollars the couple of weeks ago just get my car fixed and everything and because I waited so long I should have spread it out. But that's a learning process. You should just bought your new car, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because I would get the oil change and uh, freaking what all this you, other stuff. What you was riding around like three thousand miles past your oil mm, change? Nah, man. it wasn't that much. Oh, <laughs> what you got? <laughs> what you got? You paid fifteen hundred dollars for oil. Well, but I was just oh, it's like a thousand. It went like fifteen, but still, still. Yeah. but still. <laughs> you had no just, tire I'm just saying, but don't procrastinate so long that you have to everything just comes the back. The moral of the story is. Don't procrastinate. Yeah. Me. Yeah. It's like uh, in that song, Mathematics with Most Depth, he said, he's like, the, the story, the straw that broke the camel's back, here's a secret. The million dollar straw is underneath it. So you just let them straws pile up and pile up, pile up on you. Then it might just be one little thing, one little, you know, maybe maybe you get a speeding ticket, that last straw drops, and then boom, you crushed under it. Joe, Joe was riding around with one thread on his tie. I don't know what he's doing. He spent a thousand dollars. I had to get my belt replaced. I had to get my what belt? Yeah, the yeah. them Honda Accords go for five hundred thousand miles. That's Joe. what I'm saying. I know. I, got it. I know. He made the four ninety nine and decided to <laughs> fix everything on. Yeah, like man, them, yeah, them Honda Accords, they're like di- dinosaurs. They they go forever. At what point, Craig? We because you're you, you know obviously you're getting more busy that you've had oh. to multiply yourself. At what point did you feel like? It was necessary to get somebody to help you. Oh, I mean, and that's a godsend, and that's a plus. So what am I talking about? I had to get me a personal assistant, and my personal assistant has helped with so much. I mean, if you're able to and you get overwhelmed, you should get a personal assistant. When did you reach that point? Was there, was there a moment, a point in time? Was it just the meeting of the person, or was it like a point in time where you're like, I need help? Um, it's more so like a, a like the stars just align. This is like the meaning of a person. Um, because I started seeing myself having to do so much. And I keep telling people that everything I do is things that I love. So it's not even really stressful. And it's still not really stressful, but it helps to have someone to kind of help facilitate and kind of remind you of certain things that you need to do. And have someone on deck where you can call them and say, hey, I need this thing. I need some research done. Have someone on deck where, hey, I need to pull up my resume. Have someone on deck and, hey, I need you to go to this meeting for me. 
have someone on deck where, hey, can you go through this um, um, Zoom call and just take notes? You know what I mean? So it was getting to that point where I, I really didn't want to miss out on certain details. And to be organized, you, you, you can't leave out the details. So for instance, I'll be on a Zoom call and she'll be taking notes. And then we'll go over our, we'll go over our notes and be like, okay, you need to meet with this person, you need to meet with that person. So for instance, when we was on, we've been on, I've been on a Zoom call in the past month with Truist Bank, um, on a Zoom call with um, the Cut app, on a Zoom call with, and I'm not talking about like the secretary or the assistant of these companies. I'm talking about like the, the chief operating officer, the person who started the company. So I really don't want to miss out on any type of detail that they're saying to me or, or me miss any details that I'm saying to them. So what she will do, she'll help me prepare. So we'll write a game plan of how we're going to handle this meeting. Don't forget to talk about this, Craig. Don't forget to talk about that. Don't forget to talk about this. So we can hit our key points. And it helps so much because it helps me stay on point and it helps me stay ahead of the game and stay on track. Yeah. All I got is my iPhone and my wife. <laughs> I, mean, I, got, I mean, I was like that too. You yeah. know what I mean? But it was getting to a point now where I got one school in Virginia. I got one school in Johnson City. Now we opened up another school in, in, in Johnson City this May 6th. And then we're looking at another school in, in Asheville, North Carolina, a barber school in Asheville, North Carolina. And we're looking to, you know what I mean, just do some things around the country where just to add more value. So as those things start piling up, it start compounding, you have to be able to, an effective leader have to be able to delegate. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the way it was. I mean, you know, these CEOs of these major companies, they're not necessarily making phone calls and, and tapping people on the shoulder and having conversations. They're making high-level decisions that affect the entire corporation. It, it, and it might be something small, but something small to to them on the grand scale of things is actually a really big decision. For sure. And that's and that's what, what they get paid to do. And that's that's like the next level of it. And they have to have all the information that they could have, get, and they have people delegate different things because they can't focus on everything. You got yeah. people of different sections of the division, <laughs> and they all come to their heads of whatever, and they tell the top person what they need to worry about. And I say a personal assistant, but also it's almost like she's my coach too. You know what I mean? So yeah. she'll help me figure out some things that I can't figure out. Like she just stopped by today and kind of gave me some pointers on, hey, have you ever thought about this? I mean, she just came in passing because she knew we was doing the podcast, and she wanted to. She couldn't wait to tell me what she had on her mind for us moving forward. I'm like, so those things right there help because you can't do it by yourself. And no. most people think that they can. And when you think of it like that, you think of it, most people think of it like that because they want all the likes. they the ones who look on Facebook and Instagram and see people liking them. And then what? Or they have trouble trusting people to handle certain tasks. They have trusting people. That, you know, you can't mm -hmm. do I have a friend who has a business and... I mentioned to him the other day, I was like, <clears throat> why does your employee don't have the key? Ah, uh, he started stuttering. Well, so that means you got to wake up in the morning and go open your business for her to go into your business. If you trust her, why, if you don't trust her, why you got her working for you? Mm -hmm. He's like, man, I didn't think of it like that. Man, that's taking time away from you to wake up in the morning. You could be working on the business while she already opened the business and started the day. All right, getting an extra hour of sleep to get you, uh, get or going to the gym time. or something. I mean, you got to trust somebody. I yeah. mean, if something happens, then you pivot. What, what has been the, um, what's been something for you, Jordan, that you have, have had a little bit like difficulty adjusting to, or just a level of growth that is maybe uncomfortable? Mm. Really? It's probably just because, okay, the shop opened at 9. I get there at 10. That's just I, that's my time. I, I work from 10 to 6. But Jonathan told me, he was like, if you can get here at 9 and get one extra haircut, that's, I think he said it was like $20,000 extra a year just from one extra haircut, which I don't know if that's, I mean, well, I'm not a mathematician. But I think he just wanted to add, show you value. Yeah, I know, which I understood. And, yeah. and I have a problem of getting up early and, like, it's just I can't get up early as good as I used to, which is it's 
I feel like it's just from me not eating right, not going to sleep at the right time, which okay. I know I know the reason why it's just hard for me to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the, it's Ten, hard for me. Nine o'clock is not early. It's, it's early for me. <laughs> yeah, respect it's early for me. So see, that's what I'm saying. No, that's but I mean, I, for me, as, as far as barbering goes, like, I don't care what you work. If you work four tens or five eights, as long as it's consistent, then I don't think it should matter. As long as you're a consistent nine, a 10 to six, that's all that might matter to me. And, and that's a mistake, I think. And I'm not saying make a mistake, Jordan, but that's, that's something that a lot of barbers, young barbers do at times. I mean, I did it too. Um, you will stay up all the time at night and try to come into work mm -hmm. all beat up and tired. Yeah, that's You're not dead. effective. I mean, but that's the mindset. You're like, man, I got time. I got time. I'm going to change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, the, but the, the thought process is that we have to teach and talk to barbers about you trying to get to a point, and if you get to a point, you can rest eventually. You can chill because the ultimate goal is <coughs> financial freedom. That's the ultimate goal. Well, if you work from nine to five, what if you, what if you left a, a, an hour earlier? Would that be better for you? Than I, coming I like staying in later than I do coming in earlier. It's a single man life. Yeah, that's <laughs> a bachelor life. I, just, I, just, I, I love being at the shop late, right. I was, but I would, I would rather be at the shop late than coming early. That's just me. But I the was. thing is, too, right? And you, you come into a good situation, mm -hmm. and you have clients you've built up, so you can kind of narrate your, your, your book a little bit and your movie. But <clears throat> for a lot of barbers who are coming in, I wouldn't recommend that because if you want to grow, especially when you come out of school, you got to be the first one in the shop, mm. and you got to be the last one to leave. Cause that's how you're gonna build your clientele even more. Cause there's always that one more person, and that next person could be the lifelong person. Right, so now when I first started, I wasn't like that. I used to get there at 8:30. Right. So yeah. you got comfortable. Yeah. And <laughs> she said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm comfortable, but I'm not like not in a bad way. Like right. you know what I'm saying? Like I still, closer. <laughs> like I'm able to de like delegate how I want my schedule to be set up because I know that so, I'm gonna get consistent clients. From ten to six, right. But one of the, one of the key things I know you you talked about is financial freedom, and maybe opening a shop one day mm -hmm. or buying a house. And <clears throat> what if you could use that as like a saving technique from nine o'clock every day? That's at five hours. Maybe you could do sometimes not not five haircuts, maybe ten haircuts, because some of them might be all even, mm -hmm. and you still that same price. And maybe you could just save all that money as a down payment for a house. What do you do? You not wake up till nine? No, I wake up at like eight thirty. So, but did you think about it that way? What, like that for the saving part? Yeah, yeah. Just use that one hour extra that you like, and that could help motivate you. And well, that, usually what I do, I take all my tips, and I, that's what I use to save. I, I know, but I'm saying like in, in addition to the tips, that one extra hour as a down payment for your house, because if you break it down, that's maybe ten. Okay, average about seven haircuts. In that hour a week, seven times four is fourteen. That's twenty-eight. <clears throat> that's twenty-eight extra haircuts a week. So twenty-eight times how much is your haircut prices? Thirty-five. Okay, for a regular haircut. Twenty-eight times thirty-five equals that's almost a thousand hours. Thousand dollars, nine hundred eighty dollars. That's almost a thousand dollars extra a month. <clears throat> just to do 20 haircuts in that hour, in that in the morning. And I just did five days a week. So not 20000 but not maybe $10,000. And that could be a good down payment for a house just by coming an extra hour earlier. That's what, that's what he was trying to tell me. And I was like, okay, I never thought about that. I don't I don't think numbers yet. I haven't got to that point in my life. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to go right down everything. But, that's part, of, like, but that's part of organizing yeah, so. your thought process and preparing. This, this is what this podcast is about. And I feel like becoming a business owner has made me – Breaking down things to the number, like when I become, because like you got to start writing those numbers down because the bank wants to know what your numbers are. Yeah. And then, you know, you won't get grants to grants, but they want to know what your numbers are. But even to the same thing, like when I break it down to students sometimes, I'm like, school starts at 8 30. If you miss coming at nine o'clock on a dot, that's two and a half hours a week that you're missing. Two and a half hours a week times four. That's, <clears throat> that's 10 hours. 10 hours times times 11 months. That's 110 hours. And not counting the times that you might miss days. Not counting the times that something might come up with an emergency. 
that's going to take you because typically for a fifteen hundred dollar program, <clears throat> you have to be done within the sixteen hundred and fifty, sixteen fifty. Because anything over that sixteen fifty, you have to pay overage fees. Yeah. So if you even start thinking of it like that, being that businessman might right there, that could help you to start before you even get out in the shop. Because it's all about numbers. Everything's about numbers. I remember when I first met you. <laughs> And we were kind of hanging out talking after I had like a training session. I remember Ryan White was sitting there with us. He was not about to leave till you locked the door. He was going to sit in there until the door was locked because he was getting every minute of every second of every hour that he can get to try to get out to, to get to graduate as quick as he could. I mean, but that's, but, but that's how you begin to organize your, your thought process and yourself. Yeah. Because that's a form of preparing yourself for, because things happen. Things happen that we can't control. Because eventually you're going to get a girl and you're going to have kids. And that hour now, you can't even play with that hour because you have to. You have to drop that kid off at daycare by 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Or school. Or school. Yeah. You have to, maybe 7.30. You know what I'm saying? So it's even more imperative now to even start working on that because it's going to be such a transition. You got your girl and she's pregnant within a year. But right up until she had the baby, you just decided to, oh, man, oh, you're still going at 10 o'clock. That adjustment's going to be difficult. Yeah, I got a baby. He wakes me up about 7 every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he slapped me in the <laughs> face. So, so, and I think that's what Jonathan is a shop on. That's yeah. what he's trying to get you to start thinking about. You know, just, and a lot of times people thinking like the shop owner wants you just to come in early because the thought process is so crazy about a lot of barbers. Oh, it's his shop. He should be. He should be the one opening up the shop. It's his shop. He should be the one cleaning the shop. I'm paying my boyfriend. I'm paying my boyfriend. I show up when I want. No, it's all of you guys' shop. No, he he was telling me he was like, I, but when he first like when I first came there, he's like, I'm a. If y'all really want it, he said, I'm gonna push y'all like how I push myself, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna make y'all into a business mindset barber, like not a not a booth barber, booth friend barber. That's what he's saying. He's saying you you don't. He said, that's cool until you get to the point where you want to grow and then you're going to have to understand right. that you're going to have to be here at certain times. You got to know how to do your numbers. You got to know how to do this and all that stuff, which I'm trying to. And it's it's hard for me because I've never really been a I'm – a, I'm a big procrastinator. I've always right. been like that through high school and everything. So it's, it's always been something I've – I'm being comfortable with, so I'm gonna have to work on it. It's gonna take me some time. But there are a lot of barbers out there who are just like that, who are just comfortable, and comfortable, which leads them into the BS, you know. And they, and the key thing you said is that he said to you that I'm gonna teach you how to grow. And a lot of barbers wonder why they're not growing. It's because they're not organized. They don't have the business sense. They just have the mentality. Oh, it's a, it's the owner shop. Why I gotta do this? It's your shop. Why I got, you need to do all the marketing. It's your shop. Yo, we in this together. And then there's these barbers who want to have their own shop within somebody else's shop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only going to market my spot. My, I'm market my name because it, it makes them feel like they losing something if they big the shop up. I do feel like owning a shop has made me get more focused on, um, I mean, everything as far as like time management, money management. Um, you know, just all that stuff. Own a shop is because there's stuff you have to do. Like as a, as a as a shop, as just a barber of the shop. I mean, these are things you should practice. You should, no doubt. You and, should and, practice. And you should get in tune with the owner and ask him because ask him questions so he can push you. Yeah, and I mean, just like yesterday, I had to fill out my paper for you know the commission revenue, which I knew nothing about as just a. A, a barber, you know, but now that I have a shop commission, they want to know how much, how much my stuff is, everything I got in here, how much, how much is mic worth? How much is this chair worth? Right. Cause you got to pay taxes on it. And like before you never knew about that. And that's, that's stuff that the, the shop owner has to pay, but you as a barber pay a boot rent and he, he raises a boot rent $20. You're like, you're oh, upset. yeah. Like, what are you doing? Raising my boot rent yeah. to $20 because he's paying $2,000 in taxes just to have a building, you know, right. and, and you don't see that. Electricity. I mean, everybody barbers just think, okay, right. I'm paying, I'm paying a two hundred dollars a week. His rent is this. That's all you think about That's the rent. All you thinking? You're not thinking about the insurance for the shop. Yep. 
You're not talking. You're not thinking about um, the marketing. You got to pay for marketing, cable, Wi-Fi, yeah, uh, even water, electricity. Uh, fill the fridge full of drinks. Uh, the suckers for the kids. Toilet the, the toilet paper. The the, 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 the soap dispenser. <laughs> All you got to do is one job, and you complain. Yeah, you got. You just got to show up, cut hair, pay why, blueprint. Why, why are you raising my rent? Well, I was like, man, you got so much. You got end of the year taxes. You got. Taxes on equipment. You got all these things mm. that you got to do. Two ins- times. You got county and town. You in, live in North Town. <laughs> yeah, insurance. Insurance, yeah. Um, paying for security. Paying for somebody when it, when it snows to come and pick up, drop salt in front of the building. Somebody fix the chair somebody if you can't fix it yourself. Or if you got like some a flower garden outside the shop. Someone to do the landscaping. Yeah. And are you, are you tripping about $100 booth rent? They don't. You just don't know those things. You just don't, you just don't know <laughs> you until tripping, you're there. You just you don't know. You're tripping about a hundred dollar booth rent. You tripping about a hundred fifty dollar booth rent. I called my I called one, my shop owner, my first shop owner, and I apologized to him. I was like, man, sh-. I think most most barbers need to. I feel like Kyrie Irving when I left the bar. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> most most barbers need to because they don't realize what goes on. Yeah. Because and, and a lot of people they don't care. Well, you, you just still in the position. Like you say, you don't know what you don't know. And then you want to be mad at your new barbers because the barbers doing the same thing you doing. Yeah. You did the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and then you wonder why you're a barber and you left now because you disgruntled and you got your own spot and you like, man, my business not growing. And you got some barbers who are with you just like who you was. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, why I can't? And then you start thinking like, because everybody wants to own a shop. But once yeah. you own a shop, you aspire for more. You want to grow after that. So, but if you didn't start growing as a barber in a shop, how can you grow as a barber who owns a shop? Because once you're a shop owner, because when you're, you're a barber, you should be a barber contributing to the shop and the shop should be yours. Because when you become a barber shop owner, you're contributing to the community and the community around you is what, what is like the next barber shop. And then you're continuing to branch out after that. And getting involved in community, that's another thing that's underrated. And it could take up some of your time and effort too. Oh, yes. But you should definitely be involved in community for as much as you can get done and realistically and help your community out. Because that's part of it. Part of you gotta give back. That's part of giving back the community who's patronizing you. You gotta give something back. Yeah, everybody wants the Instagram likes, but you know, just like the Bible says, you know, it's the foolish man that builds his house on the sand. So you working all this put all this work in to build up your Instagram, what are you doing for the people that are around you? Right. That's your foundation, that's your rock. But you you want you want to put all your love on the on this sand, yeah. this Instagram sand. You make one post people don't like, they shut you down. You know what yep. I'm saying? People blow you up. Yep. And, your community is the roots of your business. Exactly. I mean that's your foundation. Your community is the roots of your business. When you have a strong community, a strong, strong upbringing, strong roots of your in your community, they help your shop grow. They help give your shop business. They'll give you money for your business. They grow. give you a good reputation. They help you with retention of clients. They help you with a good reputation. Marketing. And that's how your business grows. So those things are important. Those things are invaluable. And it starts in school. It starts with your reputation in school. Are you somebody that shows up on time? Are you somebody that does the job right? Are you somebody that complains? I mean, it starts day one. (laughs) As soon as you show up, you're building the reputation for who you're going to be in the community as a barber. Because it's funny when you ask students in the classroom. How many people want to own a shop? Own a shop. Everybody raise their hand. <clears throat> yeah, like eight out of 10 Yeah, in the room. Yeah, I want to own a shop one day. I want to get my shop one day. But nobody thinks about growing. everything that goes into it. <clears throat> everything that goes into it. Which I mean, you're not going to know until you experience it. No, you can know if, if a good shop owner is talking to you and you take his, and you take his advice mm-hmm. and you listen to him. Like you said, he mentioned to you, hey, this is what, how much money you're going to lose out on if you don't come in, you know what I mean? That's straight game right there. I mean, ask him, ask him about what paying taxes is like. Ask him about, you know, I mean, product paying tax on product, like getting tax ID number, you know, fictitious name, stuff that I didn't know anything about mm-hmm. this stuff. As I, you know I what that is? What the, A fictitious name? Do you know what that is? A fictitious name? Fictitious name. Mm-hmm. See, it's, it's just something that you just don't know until you have to experience it. Yep. If, you know, a fictitious name, when you create an LLC, you have to have – because it's not technically you're an employee of the LLC. business. Exactly. So you have to have a name that is being done under the, the LLC. Oh, so you got to come up with your own business name. Yeah. For you for, for to be an LLC. Yeah, and it could be your business name or whatever. So it's like, and it's stuff you just don't know. So, I mean. There's so much legalities that people don't. So when you, so when you, so the next time and you're a barber, you're tripping about the shop owner raising his rent. 
think about everything that goes into that. Because it is a businessman, and he has to make a profit, man, shouldn't yeah. he? Yeah, he shouldn't. He shouldn't take a hit because yeah. you wouldn't take a hit, right? You wouldn't take a hit out of your out of, for you for yourself out of for and, something. And, and then paying your boofing is you should put a little. You should think about your taxes, and you should think about the shop owner, what he has to do. Maybe you raise your haircut prices because uh, you, you've got three years of experience. And you feel like you're worth it, and clipper prices went up. I man, somebody comes and you, you raise your price to forty dollars, and then one of your clients comes and said, "Nah, man, I've been with you. I should, you, I should just have to give you 30. And a lot of times, of, that's from most of them borrowers who just a one trick pony. Exactly. You don't want to use your shares. You don't add no extra services. You don't do no shampoo, and you don't sell no product. So you're looking at your, your money is crunched because all you're doing is a fade, and you're only getting like fifteen to twenty five dollars for the fade. Instead of getting what you should be really worth in that hour, maybe you sell some product, do a shampoo, up to about forty-five, fifty dollars, and you don't have to worry about the extra. Yeah. So, would you, if he, if the person that owns the shop does go up on booth rent, would you recommend the barbers to go up in pricing? Uh, I mean, yeah, because you're going to lose money, right? I mean, but you, you can't blame the shop owner for it. Add services. Yeah. yeah. Think about adding services. Think about doing a shampoo with every haircut. Think about selling products. A lot of barbers lose money because they don't add, they're not adding services. They're not selling product. All they do, they look at their appointment book and they say they got like five people, five people times 30. Mm -hmm. That's 180. And they're like, I'm good with that. But if you do raise your haircut prices and because the shop, say the shop owner went up, I mean, a shop owner's not going to go up so much that I wouldn't think that it would be that much of a difference, but you will be losing money technically. So it's okay to go up a little bit more. But at the same time, don't, when you raise your price, say, yeah, I had to go up, you know, the, the shop owner raised the booth rent, had to go up on my haircut. Him, the, trying to throw him under the bus. Don't throw it off on him because he's just been trying to do his thing. Mm -hmm. But you don't even have to raise your price. You just add services. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean but what if you've, what if they're at the point where, I feel like I'm not at the point to where I could do a haircut and add another service. Like, I know, hair wash maybe takes like five minutes. So, I mean, five, ten minutes, somewhere, it depends. Not ten minutes, probably like five minutes. A shampoo. But I could probably do, I could probably do a haircut in 45 because I'm so detailed and I'm, I get too... But then the experience like, is still, if you're 45, you're still getting an hour. Yeah, 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 you're right. So, I mean, but... And you could add that shampoo and, you know what I'm saying, the shampoo is what? Tip. Seven, seven yeah. to twelve dollars, fifteen dollars. Yeah. And then you're looking at your haircut instead of it being you say it's thirty five. Now your haircut's fifty. I, I do feel like you get to a point to where you cap on haircuts, and maybe you want to add a shampoo that'll take it to the next level and say this shampoo is included in your service, whether you want it or not. This you can get a shampoo, and some people probably wouldn't get it, but, but they're still pay for it. But mm -hmm. the key thing is too though, don't just do a shampoo and just. Any type of shampoo, you know what I mean? And <laughs> has to be that good shampoo, spray I mean, water on their face. I mean, but also be able to break down to the client why you're doing a shampoo. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that if you wash the hair before a haircut, it actually makes it look a thousand times better, mm -hmm. Like which I didn't know until but, I... But even to the next level, a lot of people don't know the different types of shampoo. Yeah. To add protein, to add so many different things you can add to, your, to someone's hair. You know what I mean? Besides just using the regular shampoo and thinking that's for everyone. No. Go back to your milady textbook or whatever you were to continue education and understand the, the porosity, the texture, all that of the hair, how coarse it is, how fine it is, and then decide what type of shampoo you're going to give. Don't just give a shampoo just because, because there's several different types of shampoo. And that's one of the most, that's one of the most lucrative parts of this industry, mm -hmm. selling shampoo, um, selling um, products. Sh products. Mm -hmm. And giving the shampoo. That's people miss out on that. People miss out on that every day. It is really cool for me to get a whole and it's like a bonus because like I'll get a wholesaler. Cause I'm gonna use the product. I always see the products I use. So whatever I use for your hair that I like, I'll sell. So most of the time I'll put it in the hair and be like, oh man, that product is really great. Where you get that I sell it right over here. And they're like, oh, so on top of my 30, 30, 35 hit dollar haircut, you want to buy a $18 product on top of it. So do you charge a that's, little bit more than the regular price of the product. I charge I charge less than what you would buy in like Cosmoprof or um, Cosmoprof or Sally. It's just because I feel like it gives you that down home feel. Like you got the hookup. Yeah. Because I got the hookup. I'm still making a profit. It's not hurting me at all. 
I'm still making double, almost double what I'm putting into it. Okay. So I charge a little bit less to it. But how, I mean, if I use Sleek Gorilla. But most, but most people mark their, um, their product up for like 100%. I mean, and you can, but for me, and, and people will probably pay it, but for me, I, I try to give the homeboy hookup, and like, I, I use a product on you, make your hair look good, and then you're like, man, you know, because most dudes are using something from Walmart, or maybe using that yeah. girl's hair spray or something. Product. Like, I mean, they do, but they're, they're not using, like, they're not looking for matte finish, you know, whatever. They're like, what, what's my girl using? You know, it's like, that's true, right? <laughs> I mean, but, but think about it, right? All of us grew up in a household where there was a shampoo in the shower, part mm -hmm. up. Our mothers or whoever it was. Oh yeah, and we head and doing, shoulders. And, and, and suave, yeah, suave. suave. Yeah, and it was like a blue or gray bottle, right? Yeah. And everybody used it, not knowing what it's for. Nope. You know, you, you not you didn't read the label. I get, mm. I didn't read the label. You said it's shampoo. Yeah. That's in my hair. And you just probably killed the so, yeah, like, soap. I'm just gonna use the soap. For yeah. Because <laughs> I, I used to use this product all through high school, and I was like, man, it's like it's made for made my hair curly. It always make my hair drop. And I'm like, why does it make my hair dry? Because you don't read the label. I know he's not, but you don't read I don't the label. Yeah. It. Or you're washing it every day. Yeah, yeah, that too. I was like, gosh. But and that's crazy, right? How things comes full circle. Now you're a barber, you're like, man, information changes situations. Imagine if I knew the information about what to do. Because most of us grew up use grew, grew up just using the shampoo that was in the shower that our mothers had mm -hmm. or our grandmothers had. But you don't, I mean, and honestly, you don't even necessarily have to do shampoos. You can just say Hey, and this has happened a lot where I'm like, hey, y'all should usually use a shampoo and a conditioner. Well, what do you recommend? Right here or something. You don't even have to do the shampoo. You don't even have to do the shampoo. Right. You just be like, yeah. I got something right here. This is this stuff is dope. Try this. And, and people don't realize what conditioners do. Yeah. And you tell them, tell them the difference. Conditioners make your hair feel good. Yeah. And soft. You know what I mean? But people think that a conditioner and a shampoo is the same thing. And that's the difference in the students who go to school and all they're worried about is just the fading. They're not worried about it. nothing else. They're not even taking the time to understand what a shampoo does, what a conditioner does, <clears throat> what a matte paste does for you, how to style your hair. All those things are part of school, too. Learn how to style your hair. Learn how to blow dry your hair. <laughs> Learn the intricacy of the blow dryer. That, that was... I, a lot of students don't know how to use that's a, a blow dryer. That's a skill itself, too. That's, a, yeah. that's extra service. Yeah. So, I mean, I went through... I was going to the point where I was like, man, I want to learn how to style, so I had to... Focus on just styling hair. Like, I had to focus literally just on style. Because I remember when I first got the, because I was always obsessed with doing crops, right? All the way through school. I wanted to do it the right way and I never could get it. And I finally got it. And I tied to Emma. I was like, Emma, I finally got the right way to do a crop. Like, yeah. on top, because the add texture and all that stuff on there. I was so excited because I was like, man, this is like my favorite haircut to do. So I was like, this is my freaking favorite dope. haircut for a while. It's still, it's still a cool haircut to do. No doubt. But you know what I'm saying? It's not being that one trick pony. Mm -hmm. And that's so many students focus on just, oh, that fade is just blurry. Well, and we've said it numerous times. What's after that fade? A lot more. So you're going to spend $1,500 just stressing, just worry about that fade, and that's it? Something you can learn in like a day. And don't get me wrong, the fade is dope. That's one of the best haircuts ever. But still, there's so much more to learn because the more you learn, the more you earn. That's just... <laughs> That's just, hey, that's just religious right there. And I just feel like once you get to a point where you're good at fading, you're just going to get bored. Right. And I just don't, that's one thing I always take pride in is I don't want this to become a job. Like, I want to enjoy this as long as I live. I want to be able to learn and educate and teach people. And, like, I want to just keep getting better. Like, I just, I don't want to be stable. But that's the importance the of thing. also just organizing your time. Yeah. Doing it right because... Your clock is running when you're in school. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of students try to rush in that last 1,400 hours, 1,500 hours. You got 1,350, you got 150 hours to go. You're trying to get everything possible. You're trying to get every instructor's attention. And when they was trying to get your attention, you were just elsewhere. Ah, uh, you was, oh, I'll wait. Oh, I'll wait. Uh, don't come to school. Just miss out on days. I'll wait. I get it. The, fa and, the fate is, is like barber crack because it's like, it's like it's like our number one pusher because most dudes I like to fade like to keep a fade, right? And that thing grow back in a week, and, <laughs> and then you like and they look at it like yeah I gotta go get another fade. <laughs> yeah. and, and what's next? I mean, like I said, I was I was into that too, and I didn't know, but it wasn't someone just like pushing it into me like man, learn more, learn more in this industry. And take, learn, and take care of your time. Yeah, take care of your time. Organize it. Don't procrastinate with it. Be better. 
because you can take this thing to the moon and back. And then you on you get to a point where you need a personal assistant. And then <laughs> that person's time get maximized. You need two of them. Right. <laughs> then, then you need a, a, a vice president. <laughs> I mean, no doubt. I mean, because the, the next step here I'm, I'm, I'm working on, I mean, just to be transparent, I mean, I'd like to work on a nonprofit organization. And now, you know what I mean? Because I see how I can help so much more people do, through a nonprofit. Yeah. Like the, uh, the, the prison thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I wasn't even thinking on that. Mm-hmm. When I started being a barber, but that's the things about going to a an environment. And before I say that, I'll say this: the reason I do all these things so I can come back and talk to my students in the school and let them know what the possibilities are out there. Mm-hmm. Because I feel if I experience them and have a good example, just like you say, you will not sell no one product that you won't use on yourself. Yeah. So I don't want to sell or give students information that I want go out there and search or indulge myself in without participating in. That's another reason I opened a shop too. It was like, we're sitting here telling people be the best they could be, do all you can be, maximize this. And I felt like that was the next level. I need to have the courage to step out and do the next thing for myself. Right. And and, and, and it's important. Mm -hmm. It's important. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, I, I could just help. I could reach so many more people through this. And it all because of my love for barbering and my love for helping people. And I put two of those together, it makes a baby who's a nonprofit. That's dope. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, it, it constantly evolves. And, and, and once, you, once you keep it like that, it keeps it fun. It keeps it interesting because you don't have no bad days. Yeah. So and you got to organize your time. You got to organize. and Because I love information so much. I started doing this thing last week. I, I signed up for this class last week. It's a coding class. And coding and AI. We've talked about it a lot on here. Mm-hmm. And I've seen a couple of my friends, they had this thing where they have a class build, teaching how to build websites and teaching some basic coding. And I was like, it just instantly grabbed me. I was like, I'm going to do that. And I know I had to find some time to put it together to make it happen. And it's in 5.30 to 6. And this is our, we've had four classes so far. I missed the first two, but he told me he's coming. He'll, he'll catch me up. And I'm like, it is so interesting. And I had to be able to organize myself to even do that. Because if I, if I didn't have an organization or have some understanding of it's going to require some time and a commitment, I'd just be totally just beating my head in. But again, it's something that I love and something I could talk to my students about. That's dope, man. You always, I mean, invest. That's another thing. Have you got to take time for yourself and and put yourself in the things that you like that might not necessarily benefit you in any way, except the fact that you like it. And that just that's just for overall wealth and happiness, like just just for your own peace and happiness. And 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 then also starting the thing with recidivism, working with the prison now. Started that last week, so I started working with the women, teaching them the skill at the jail, and. They built me like a facility in the jail. It is so dope. I gotta take pictures of it. Yeah, you got you got to put it on the podcast. Yeah, page. yeah. It, they take they, they built me a facility like a classroom with chairs, with barber chairs, a shampoo bowl. It is so dope. So I started last week teaching them, and it'll be I think a three or five month course, teaching them how to prepare them to get their license, introducing them to the skill, teaching them about the, the they're gonna have textbooks, they got workbooks, and Last week, the women, start with women, they were so interested in hearing what I had to say. And one of the key things they said to me, um, are you always this positive? I was like, um, I can lie to you and tell you no or yes. This is the first time you met me. I'll just let you make that decision your own in the next couple of weeks. Because one of the key things they was trying to figure out, who is there to help them? Because a lot of the resources are out there with a lot of resources, aren't for people who are in jail. And a lot of times, everybody over there, they just want a chance. They just want an opportunity to know that someone cares or when they get out, they'll, be, they'll have something in place for them to get a job, again, to occupy that time, yeah. to be able to make some adjustments. Because if, if they don't have something occupying that time, it's highly likely that they might fall into the trap again with recidivism and it might go back. So the, uh, the chief reached out to me. He's like, yo, can you help us out? I was like, cool. 
So everything I'm doing, it revolves about around this industry. And I can go back to the students again and say to them, hey, you can do this. You can do that. You can do this. Because there's so much more than just standing behind a chair. Yeah. That prison thing is real. Oh. I did that for four years. It's, it's a different world. Well, well, yeah, well, you was you were shaking them down. At, 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 nah, at, at, I mean, no, I was. I mean, I I try to spread positivity in a lot of guys. You know, like some of them, I still cut their hair. You know, even after even after you know they got out. So, but it's just it, it is hard for them. You know, unless you already had something to fall back on, say if you had a degree or something or a trade it's before difficult. you before you went in, because they used to have tons of programs for people when they go into prison. But mm-hmm. you know, now that you barely can get your GED if you go in if you really right. wanted to. So yes, that's, that's difficult. So yeah. I mean, it's it's important, man, because you don't want to help them in there. Eventually, they're gonna get out. So what? Ninety ninety five percent of them is gonna get out. So when they get out, what do you do? You, you, you don't, if you don't help them in there, they're going to help themselves when they get out. Yeah, they're going to figure it out. <laughs> they're going to figure it out. They're going to paint their own picture. So help them paint a picture while they're in there to give them some hope. Yeah. Help them paint a picture while they're in there to give them a chance, to give them an opportunity, because that's what most people want. Just Behind bars or out of, outside. Mm-hmm. People just want an opportunity and a chance. Yeah. So, so that's where it's at. What do you think about that, Jake? <laughs> It's a lot to ingest. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, this was a good, this was a good podcast. I like talking about this one. So tell Tony, tell Tony, Tony, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Antonio. <laughs> thank you, Antonio. You know, back to back week weeks, right? The two Tonys, Tony and Antonio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> is is he in night class? Yeah. Is he, he is in night class. Which so he be there tomorrow. Which one? Antonio or is yeah. it Tony? No, Tony. Tony's in the day, and then Antonio. Tony is in the day. Yeah, yeah. And Antonio is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll see him tomorrow then. I see. Oh, I'm you not, start tomorrow? Yeah. Are oh, you talking to Dane already? What time are you going? Uh, probably, I said anywhere between six six thirty somewhere around there. Yeah. Yo. So I'm. A, so you talked already. Let him know that you mm-hmm. come in tomorrow. You talked yeah. to the day? Uh, not today. I talked to you. Well, when we did the, she was there at the, okay. the thing. But oh, on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, she's looking forward to it. Just kind of six o'clock would be good. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna try my best because uh, yeah. I probably have a I have an appointment at five. My last appointment's at five. Okay. So I'll yeah. probably be like six, six fifteen somewhere. Right? Yeah, that's good. They're gonna be excited. That's gonna be big. I mean, you're gonna be there Tuesday, am I once on, on Wednesday? Yeah. And yeah, I'll 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 go I'll be there Thursday. I'm gonna try to go on the days too. Sometimes I'm gonna try to make it sometimes like it might not be all the time, but I'm gonna try to go. Well, like I said, day. how you could do it during the day is just take one of your appointments down there. I was I was going to my appointments one of my appointments tomorrow. Yeah. Too. Maybe it's your nine o'clock appointment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right when they get out of class, too. Actually, I might, I might. No, you I just ride down the road, idea. and you I still get paid idea. for it. Yeah. yeah, and it make people feel good. You're like, hey, you can be my model. No doubt. Let's do the haircut in school. You might have to be my model in front of people. Like, oh yeah, I'll do that. That's gonna be big, man. Right? Yeah. That's gonna be big. Man, you realize we've been rocking for about an hour. Yeah, we and, we and cooked it up today. It seemed like we was on there for an hour and some change. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. rolling. So y'all ready for the after uh, the after show? After show. So we have something now where we're gonna start. We're gonna do an after show. We're gonna go live on Barber College Success, and we're gonna take some questions. But we're just gonna get some feedback about the show. So if you out there and coming up, we're gonna do it after every show. Go live and maybe three to four or five minutes, and just the after show, and just talk about the podcast and open it up for questions if you have any. Do yep. Mitch's beard? Y'all can see Mitch's beautiful face. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So, so what we'll do, um, I don't know, we all, matter of fact, all three of us can go live. What? We, all three of us will go live. No, nah, we go. just do it on the Barber College Success okay. page. Good. We, Good. Can, you can tag us in that, right? Like collaborate yep. it. And yep. it was, yeah. Yep, yep. So what I'll do too, um, I got an idea. We'll talk about this afterwards. But again, this was a lovely show. Shout out to our guy, Mitchy Mitch, on the ones and twos. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mitch, you got to show your face in the camera sometimes. Just let them know that you are real. Because we talk about you and we shout you out, but I don't think people think that you are real. Mitch looks like he belongs in, <laughs> in the MLB. He <laughs> like does. He needs yeah. to be there. Again, <laughs> shout out to uh, all our listeners. Am I? Where we at again? Uh, we're in Ireland. We're in Australia, U.S., Canada. Uh, the U.K. UK. Did I say that already? I thought I did. No, nope. U.K., yep, United Kingdom. Yeah, the top five countries yep. around the world. And Jordan threw in your, your, your favorite, your favorite. Madagascar, your, man. Madagascar. <laughs> did you talk about it yesterday? Well, I was going, last time I was gone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah shout out Madagascar. Yeah, no doubt. We going. I had somebody following me from Africa, and I was trying to figure out what flag they had. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, we going. 
You gotta go to Madagascar. We going. I be watching these food reels all the time on yeah. Facebook. I had somebody follow me from Tokyo, Japan. Okay. You see yeah. what I'm saying? That's we, dope. We, we rocking there. I'll be, be getting some food. See, that's big. So that's where our podcast is going. That's what it's, it's it's big enough. And this after show is gonna be even liver. We're gonna make it do what it do. Again, Barbacar's success brought to you by Before I go, what are our last words? Our last words, what, what, what you got to say, man? Guard you, your time. Protect your time. Yeah. That's all you got. That's all you really have until, yeah. until it ain't there no more. Learn to say no. Don't, don't be scared to say no. Now, it's, yeah. I know that's a hard, that's a really hard one. Because, you know, because you got a lot of people that, you know, that, that want to try to take advantage of you. And if you're a nice person, it's kind of hard to say no. But just... Try to try to get it in there every now and then. Try to put that word in there. No doubt, it's important. It's spreading love, the crown cuts away is the only way. That's how we do it. Spread love again. Barbara Car Success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC and Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol. If you're looking for opportunity to get into a career, why not the barbering industry? Why not the cosmetology industry? Why not the aesthetics industry? Why not the manicure and the nail industry? It's a wonderful opportunity for you guys out there to jump into this industry and change careers and make 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 a life out of it. Be happy with what you do. Because when you find out your why, you find your passion. And it's, you don't work a day in your life. This Our industry is wonderful. What do you guys think about our industry? What you love about our industry? Everything. There's no, everything. There's, there's nothing, nothing I don't like. I haven't found the first thing I don't like. That's big. You know what? We're going to jump on this after show. Hope you guys can jump on and check us out and listen to it. But we're going to give you, again, some gems, drop some seriousness, some serious things on here, and give it to you the, the real way, which is the crown cuts way or the barber college successful. Let's get it. One time for your mind. Mm. Mm. Peace.